I'm so glad that you come and listen to this teaching. I would like to encourage you with the book of Psalm chapter 37, verses 3 to 7. The Bible says, Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in Him and He will do this. He will make your righteousness shine like the dawn and the justice of your cause like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Do not fret when men succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. I believe that you trust in the Lord and you will obey Him and He will give you success. He will give you protection and please receive the Word of God and put it into practice. I will see you in the teaching. God bless you. This morning, I would like to talk about family, about raising kids. And uh, I would like to really encourage all of you because this message is not just for mom, but for everyone in this room, for every kids and every parent. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much, Lord, that you love us and you want to tell us the truth and the truth will set us free, Lord. We thank you, Father, that you really give us grace and power to be able to do what you say in the scriptures, Lord. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. I believe that all of you want to have a wonderful destiny that God has prepared for you. We all want to have a great destiny. Definitely on earth here, we want to have the final, the end of our life that is so great, so full of blessing, and the blessing will go down to the thousand generations. Not only that, we have destiny in heaven, we have eternal life in heaven, and I pray that all of you will be in heaven for eternity and you shall have a big mansion in heaven. Not only that, you have a lot of rewards in heaven. And I pray that that is your destiny. And this great destiny that God has for you will be also for your children and also for your grandchildren and great-grandchildren as well. We should not just live for the things on earth. We should think about the future as well. Therefore, I would like to encourage you that you should set the goal to reach to the finish line with joy. And eventually, you're going to have the crowd of glory in heaven. God wants your children to go to heaven with you. God wants your grandchildren to go to heaven with you. And this is our responsibility to help them to know Jesus Christ. I read a comment of a Christian. This is a comment it says this way. I don't know what your destiny will be. But one thing I know, the only ones among you who will be really happy are those who will have sought and found how to serve. The topic of sermon today is, it's not about you. Train your children not to have the selfish attitude. It's not about me. When Jesus was walking on earth, he loved children so much. He grabbed the children, he hold them, and he prayed for them and blessed them. Can you see the first picture there? Jesus loved children, and Jesus wants the children to go to heaven with us. He even said that we should have faith like little children. Jesus said in the Bible, in Luke chapter 22, verse 27, For who is greater, he who has sit at the table, or he who serve? Is it not he who sits at the table? Yes, I am among you as the one who serve. This sermon, I would like to talk about the life that is so full of the hard attitude of serving other people. Definitely, this sermon is not only for children or for mom in this room. We're going to pray together for our children. You want to have great destiny. You want to be in heaven and with a lot of rewards in heaven and big mansion in heaven. 
Therefore, you should live a life of service. You serve other people. And you parents set a good example to your children. Because whatever spirit you have, you will pass on to your children. If you have a serving heart, your children will have a serving heart as well. So this sermon is for everyone in this room and everyone on the live stream as well, that we need to be good example to our children. In fact, God spoke to me in the past one year, and definitely this is not from me. It's from the Holy Spirit from heaven. God spoke, the Father spoke to me by the Holy Spirit. He said to me, Son, I'm very concerned about the next generation. I don't want them to lose their salvation. I don't want them to miss heaven. Therefore, please tell my people, I ask God when I should say this. So God said on the Mother's Day, I'm going to say this to all of you. It's your primary responsibility, Daddy and Mommy, to help your children to know Jesus Christ and to really get saved and go to heaven with a lot of rewards in heaven. That's my primary responsibility. I'm not pushing re responsibility to the church. I need to be good example to my children. When my children see me and Pastor Da, they notice that we love Jesus. We are sincere. We are genuine. We are not goofy. We are not hypocrites. We are the real Christians. Number two, we never talk bad about the church because if you talk bad about the church, they will walk away from church when they grow up. Number three that God spoke to me is that don't blame anyone else, but you repent every day because when you shape up yourself, your kids going to look at you and say, wow, this is a real Christian. I want to be like them. Therefore, I take serious about growing spiritually myself, and I want to be an ex example to my children. Not only that, God said to me, the way he wants our children to continue in faith until Jesus comes back is, number one, not only that he asks us to be good example to them, we talk about Jesus, we pray, we love the church, we honor the leadership of the church. Not only that, he said, our children need to have a community. They need to have a community of believers together. And when they grow up, they feel that they want to be in the community they grow up with. I notice in America, many young people, after they turn 19 years old, they disappear from the church. It's gone. They say, bye-bye, mom. Before I turn 18, I come because I am a child. I need to obey you. But now I'm a grown-up man, a grown-up woman. I can do whatever I want now. I'm an adult now. Bye-bye, disappear. And that's happened a lot in the U.S. here. That's why God told New Hope International Church to build a community, that we have the community of children, community of youth, community of young adults, so that they have close friends in the church. Don't misunderstand that all this community is not just about Bible study, but it's about building fellowship and relationship. Uh, yesterday, on Saturday, yesterday, we have more than 30 young adults packed in the fireside room. We really have fun. Young adults come in, they laugh together, they testify, they pray for one another. And I'm so glad that our young adults will not backslide because they have a community in the church. That's why, please, I'm going to do Thai way. Please. I'm going to do Korean way. What else? I'm going to do Japanese way. What else? Uh, I will do Egyptian way. <laughs> I will do the soldier way. Parents, please spend gasoline money to drive your children, the youth, to the youth group. Every week, let them join the youth group. It's not about hate knowledge. It's not about Bible study only. Yes, we have Bible study, but it's about community. When they grow up together, they love one another, they will stick to Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Your kids' closest friend should be in the church, not should be outside the church, so that they will stick with God. 
when they grow up and the, the world gonna pull them out from the kingdom of God. And I notice that every young people in this church who have close friends in this church, they stay to today. They don't backslide because they stick to their community. You can see here that Jesus say, I want my people to be servant. We should have the servant attitude and we should pass that on to our children Show example to them that we are serving. We are not selfish people. We're serving and we train them to be servants of the kingdom of God. Whether they can go to nursing home to clean the window or they can call their friend who is discouraged and pray for their friend or they can give food to the poor. May I see the second, third, fourth, fifth picture there. They can serve God in a different ways. Maybe go out to clean up the church area or somebody's house. Maybe a single mom own a house and our children go there and help to clean the house for that single mom. Or go out to give food to the um, homeless people. Or, next picture, your young people can be friends with some older people. Go visit people in a nursing home. Pray for people. Next one. This young boy served this older lady. We want our children to be servant. We think about serving other people. It's so important that our children and grandchildren grasp the concept of serving since they are young. They may help in your house to cl clean dishes, clean the carpet, or put the garbage can out, or help you to turn off the light. The children need to learn how to serve in the church, get involved, maybe help older people to carry the back into the church or serve in the video ministry, sound ministry, children program. You can do so many things, but you need to train your children to be servant, to have the servant heart. Since they are small, you need to train them until they have the desire to love, to help, and to serve other people since they are young. They should have a giving attitude as well. They are not selfish people. They have a giving attitude and show compassion to those who are in need. And this giving attitude will shape the way they handle money. Instead of thinking about, I'm going to only bake, 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 bake. They will study hard. They will work hard, they will earn income, and they want to use the income to bless the kingdom. Give to God, give to the needy, give to the poor, the widow, or people who need help. They should have that attitude since they are young, that they want to work hard and give and help and serve and do things for the society. You need to train them, talk about it, show them how to do it since they are young. You should not treat your children like a king. Sit at home. Okay, mom going to do this for me. Mom going to do this. No, no, get up from the couch. Go do something too. Train them how to serve the Lord. They will be working hard and they are trained to have the right spirit to the point that they extend their life out of their own hectic daily life and think about other people who have need, who have the concern of life. Train them that way and pray for them, set good example to them. Not only that, we should train our children to have a mindset of the world vision. Matthew 28 say, go and preach the gospel to the world. We need to train them to love the nations, pray for the nations. You should be so happy that you come to international church. You see Japanese walking, wow, arigato kosaimas. So happy to see you. You see the Congolese work walking. Oh, merci beaucoup. So happy to see you here. When you see the Vietnamese walking, wow, I have a world mission mindset. This is the mission field in New Hope. We're going to reach out to the international people. You say, oh, come on. Dive, uh, no, and come cheer. So you need to really have a mindset of the mission. And your children should love the international people. They should have a world mission mindset. 
train your children not to have the attitude of discrimination or favoritism. Our society, our home, our church really depend on the next generation. This is the reason why lately I spend a lot of time on the young people because I know I'm getting older and one day I will be gone. I want to train next generation to rise up in this church to be great people. Those who are very loving, compassionate, faithful, loyal, committed, generous, moral, hardworking, commitment, they all train to have the right character, loyalty, faithfulness, commitment, serve, give, want to bless other people, generous to people. We want to train young people that way because our future in this church and in our society and our home depend on how they are in the future. Amen? So as parents, we need to train them that way. We need to put this kind of attitude into their heart, train them from when they are young, and they will grow up as a servant of the Lord. We pray that they will not have a hardened heart due to the difficulties in life or because of the love of money. We want them to be giver, to be generous, not to be hoarder or to be taker. Take, 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 take. Hoard, 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 hoard things in the house. Hoard money with themselves. They, they want to be giver and serving and helping other people. God wants us to train our children that way, but it has to start from the parents, though, because they're going to learn from your spirit. The parents, all of you, mom and dad in this church, you should have that spirit, the spirit of giving, the spirit of generosity, the spirit of serving other people. So I'm going to read the scripture from now on, and we're going to pray for our children together, one scripture at a time. Look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God in Christ forgave you. Let's train our children and grandchildren to have tender-hearted toward the hurting people in society. Should we pray together that we're going to have tender heart? And we're going to train our children, and our children will have the tender hearts to, toward those who suffer. Amen? Amen? Let's pray together. Father, we pray, Lord, that we ourselves, the adult, whether we are single or married, Lord, you're going to put the tender heart into our heart, Lord. And we will love people. We care for people, Father. We lift up our children and grandchildren that they will be tender-hearted and forgive. They care for the hurting. They care for those who are in need, Father. Lord, your church will be that way, will be full of people who are tender-hearted, Lord. Oh, Lord, our home will be the place who care for the needy and help the poor, Lord. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Are you taking the Word of God seriously? I take the Word of God seriously. I want this to happen in my life, in, in the hearts of my children. James chapter 2, verse 1. My brothers, as believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ, don't show favoritism. So we don't want our children to show favoritism, that they will do good only to certain people, or they will only hang out with their friends. They will reach out to people who are different from them, maybe in age or in education or in character or background. We want our children to really have an unconditional love to people and love the nations, love people of different skin color and also different background, different na nationalities. We want to train them that way. Amen? I'm glad that we are international church. So we mix together and we train people to really love international people. So let's pray together that we're going to be 
the people who will not show favoritism, and our children will not show favoritism either. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Can I have the microphone there? I like Pastor Tyson to pray for our children and pray for our member. Give to Pastor Tyson. Father God, Lord, we ask for your grace and your wisdom to be able to raise children in the way that pleases you. We pray, Father God, that you um, pour out your spirit on the young people and that they will love you, that they will be the salt and light in the society, Lord. Father, we pray that you reveal yourself to them, that they will know you from a young age, that their hearts will be committed to you and seek you and want to please you, Father. Thank you, Father God, for giving us the gift of the mothers and the, the families, Lord. And Father, we, we pray, Father, that everyone will be part of the spiritual, this big spiritual family here in this house, regardless of whether they have kids here or not, that, that they will be able to play a role in um, guiding the kids and helping the young people, the next generation, to grow up and love you and, and seek you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Give to, to me. Give. Mm -hmm. I will call somebody. Okay. So, number one, pray that we all have tender heart. Two, we pray that our kids and our family, family will not show favoritism. Number three, 1 Timothy 6, 18. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. Let's pray that God will change us to be or to have the capacity of empathize or show mercy to those who are in need and to be generous to other people and to do good deeds to other people. It starts from you, parents, if you empathize or care for those who are in need and you really generous to those who are in need around you. It can be emotional need can be physical need, financial need, whatever. Maybe some single mom need somebody to help babysit for a few hours. You say, hey, I volunteer. I'm going to babysit you, for you because you're going to go out to work today. I'm going to be there at your home. I serve you. Or maybe go to a home that the person is sick and needs somebody to help clean up the house. You can do different things to really show the sympathy, show love, and show generosity to people who are in need. Amen. So, Tanida, could you pray? So, you say, I don't want to sit in the front anymore. <laughs> I was literally not making eye contact that entire time. Okay. Um. <laughs> I can call people in the back to be careful. Um. <clears throat> okay. Pray for sympathy. So sympathy and generosity. Okay. Lord, I just lift up all the children in our church, Lord, and actually every single one of us. I just pray, Lord, that the power of your Holy Spirit would go and give them your wonderful fruits of the Holy Spirit, Lord, which include a generous spirit. And I just pray that you, your Holy Spirit would quicken them to see needs and not only see them but want to meet them, to um, have your grace to be able to meet them. Um, give our children the resources and the wisdom, the time, the commitment, and the, um, the, the urge to just help when they see someone in need. I just pray that our children would not be self-centered, but that they would be other people focused, that they would Amen. care about other people and, and not just themselves, Lord. The happiest people are people who are not only thinking of themselves. And I just pray for this worldview, this mindset, Lord, for this... Um, Lord, the veil of, of any selfishness to be raised off of them, that they would look to others and care deeply about what other people need and feel. And I just pray, Lord, that they would know that the source of all um, anyone's, uh, the fix to people's problems, Lord, would be you. And so that they would direct their friends and their family and their loved ones towards Christ 
and that that would be the goal of their life, Lord, that um, these problems, Lord, that they would know would be fixed through knowing you. And I just pray that they would be really good witnesses, that they would shine the light of God in in, in their lives um, through generosity, Lord, and through caring. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Praise God. I pray that all of you are going to put this teaching into practice and pass on to your children. The next scripture, Ephesians chapter 6, we are talking about not only about me, but we serve others, we care for others, reach out to others, help other people. It's not selfishness, but being generous to people with your time, your energy, everything. Born servants, be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in sincerity of heart as to Christ, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as born servant of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men. Knowing that, this is why I'm talking about destiny, knowing that whatever good anyone does, he will receive the same from the Lord, whether he is a slave or free. When you live a life of service, you help people, you give to people, you're generous to people, you look for the chance to minister to people, pray for people, visit people, the Lord will pay you back. On this planet Earth, while you're living here, the Lord going to pay you back. The Lord say, whatever good anyone does, he will receive the same from the Lord. But not only that, he will pay you back in heaven. You're going to have rewards in heaven. This is why the life of serving others is so important. That's why we need to train our children that way. In this scripture, we learn that we should pray that we will find opportunity to serve and experience the joy and the blessing of serving others. And when we serve others, we would not just serve to get something back from people or reputation or position. We serve others as if we serve the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the rewarder of your life. We don't look for reward from human beings. God will reward us when we care for people and serve other people. Should we pray together that we all will keep our eyes on the Lord and we know that the Lord will pay us back and we're going to serve others as if we serve the Lord. Should we pray together? Let's lift our hand up to heaven and pray together. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord, to have the right heart, the right attitude. Help us to keep our eyes on Jesus Christ, that we can serve others just like we serve you, Lord. And you are the God of the payback. You shall pay back to us, Lord, what we did for other people. And you shall pay our children back when they serve in the church, when they serve the community, serve the family, Lord. They will learn that you are the faithful God, Lord. Help them, Lord, our children, to focus their eyes on Jesus Christ, Lord. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Today, the preaching is different style. We read and we pray. Okay. Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. The Bible says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. It's not about you. Everyone say, it's not about me. <laughs> not vain conceits, not out of selfish ambition. It's not about you, it's not about me, it's about others, it's about him. But in humility, consider others better than yourselves. So let us serve other people with a humble heart, thinking that other people are more important than us. We are not serving to get anything for ourselves, that people will like me, oh, I grab the microphone, I can preach, oh, look at how great I am, how much Bible knowledge I have. No, it's not about you. It's about other people benefit. Humble yourself. Serve with humility. 
we should have that spirit in our heart first so that we can pass on to our children. I noticed that children usually act like their parents. They get the same spirit. This is why the Bible talks about the blessing that go down to the thousand generation. And the Bible talks about the curse that go down to the third and fourth generation. The curse is something wrong in your life. Something bad will pass into your children to the third and fourth generation. This is the reason why I'm really taking serious about living a holy life. Because I want to pass the right thing to my children. God, our God is the God of the generation. That's why the Bible used the term, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You need to make sure that you are godly parents because you're going to pass on to your children what is good and what is bad. So you have to be very careful. I want to get rid of the bad things out of my life so I can pass on to the good, the good things to my children, the God of the generation. Amen. We're going to pass on love, Pass on faith, pass on the humble heart, the serving heart, the generous heart, caring for people. We want to pass on to the right thing to people. So we're going to pray now that we will be humble when we serve. And we want to serve with the right attitude. Amen? Mm, who should come up and pray for us now? I'm going to call name. Okay. Um, Pastor Cesar, could you come to pray for the parents and pray for all the children? <laughs> Pastor Cesar. Father, we are so grateful and thankful that you would choose us, God, and when we didn't want to choose you. And so, God, I pray that you would help all of our children, all of our young people, as well as all of us as uh, parents and adults to have the same attitude that Jesus had, a servant attitude that manifests itself in humility. So I pray, God, that you, through your spirit, would give us this grace to walk in humility so that we can be good examples to our children. And our children will grow up in an environment where they would see not only us just speak about humility, but us walking in it. Yes, Lord. Lord, so that we can be good examples as we follow you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. <laughs> Praise God. My heart desire is to see that our church here will be so pleasing to the Lord. That may God look at all of us, he smile and say, wow, these children of mine, they love me, they love people, they train their children very well, they are godly people, they're generous, they have the high heart, they have compassion, they love people, they want to help other people. They are not selfish or self-centered, but they always think about other people and the nations. They want to really reach out to people. Amen? We want to be that kind of church because that is the heart of Jesus Christ. Let's look at another scripture, Matthew 20, 28. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus Christ set a good example to us. He did not come to be served, but he came to serve. Jesus preached, taught, lay hand on the sick, cast out demons, multiply the loaves and the fish. He served and served. He is a good example to all of us. That's why we love to serve too. We have the same spirit as Jesus Christ. He is in us. We want to serve other people. But we should not just only serve, but we should also let people whom we serve know that Jesus is the reason we serve. We are not serving for our own money. We are not serving for our own benefits. 
but we serve to lead people to Christ. When people look at us, wow, this person is so different. Why he, he is so generous? Why he's so kind? Why he sympathize with me? Why he care? Why he call me and visit me? He spent time driving to my house and pray for me. Why he cook dinner, not he, she. I don't know how to cook dinner, Pastor Da cook. Why she cook jai yo and feed me? Wow, this person is so different. And then we can say, the reason I do this because I know Jesus Christ. So our children will not only serve for their own benefit. They will not do that. They want to lead people to Christ. The master, the example of servant. He is a servant leader. We pray that our children will know Jesus Christ personally. I want the file of God to touch our children. They will know Jesus personally. They will not just come to church for tradition or for just some religious ritual, but they come and they encounter God themselves. And they learn about God. They grow up in God. They have relationship with God. And they serve because they love Jesus. And they want to bring people to Jesus Christ. Amen? We pray that our children will talk about Jesus, tell people about Jesus Christ. Should we pray about that? Should we pray that that will happen? Okay, Joy, you are the mother now. You can pray now. You dare not sit in the front this anymore. This is not fair. He keeps targeting the front. It's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's lift up our children. <laughs> Father God, thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that you give us to raise the young generation and our children. Lord, we pray that they will be a living sacrifice for you, Father God, that they will live their lives, Lord, to serve you and to bring others to know you, Lord, that their intention in their Christian walk with you, Lord, is to bring their friends and family to know you more, Father God, that you will use them, Lord. Stir into them, Lord, that they are living sacrifices for you, Lord, living sacrifices that will walk daily with you, Lord, and bring many, many, and many into the kingdom of God, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you. John 13, verse 5. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to watch his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. Jesus is a good example. Even though he was the master, he was the Lord, he is the king of all kings, but he served his disciple by washing their feet. He wants to show example to us that we want to be servants. You know, please come to church with the attitude, what can I do for you? What can I do to serve you? Don't come to church with the attitude, what can you do for me? We want to serve others. Amen? We are not here to boast about hate knowledge, how much we know the Bible. We are here to serve one another. We are not here to show, oh, how long I have been in this church. Look at my seat. This is my usual seat. I sit here. This is a special seat for me. No, 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 no. We are here to serve one another. Look for opportunity to serve. And we can serve people in a different way. I want to give you 15 ways of serving. I'm going to read the, uh, here quickly. Number one, we serve in our family. We go home, help the mom, help the wife. We serve in a family clean up, cooking, whatever, putting trash in the garbage can, um, do whatever in the home to serve one another. Number two, we serve by giving our finances, giving tithes and offering. We use our finances to serve one another. I'm so proud of one young lady in the church. We, yesterday we have a young lady and young man in the church. Yesterday, we have Chick-fil-A in the young adult group. So I walk to them and say, uh, you order the Chick-fil-A, you order the drink, I would like to share. What is your uh, Venmo? I want to Venmo you money. And that young man and young lady say, 
you don't need to repay for the whole thing. What? You pay for the whole thing? That is generous heart. That is serving. Serving by giving. Food, giving money. In my heart right away, I know and I know God going to bless this young man and young woman in this group. God going to pay them back. God loves generosity. Amen. Number three, you serve by volunteer in the community. Help the community. Four, you serve by visiting those who are in need. Visiting somebody. Maybe they need to move the house, you go and help. Moving the furniture. Or you serve by teaching children, minister to children. You serve by donating clothes and other goods to people. You serve by be a friend. Somebody is so lonely, they need friend. You look at somebody in the church and, wow, that person come here, no friend. You go and talk to that person and say, can you come to my house to have dinner with me? You serve by being a friend with somebody who is lowly. You serve God by serving children. You serve by mourn with those who mourn. You serve by sharing your talents and your creative idea. You use your talents. I'm so proud of the children up on the, south, uh, the video system that they're, they're all young people up there. They serve in the video ministry. I'm proud of Justin, young man, who served in the South Board. He's using his talent to serve. I think the children program need more workers. I can help to be assistant for the children program teacher. You can serve in the camp. You can serve as an archer. You can serve in the snack program. You can serve, help arranging things. Oh, so many things you can do to serve. Amen. I noticed that a lot of people find their talents and they use their talents to serve. Not only that, you use a simple act of service. Simple act of service, such as serving by smiling. Serving by hi. Serving by remembering the Vietnamese language. Oh, chai yo. Oh, bun thịt nướng. Oh, kham samida. The Korean word. So when the Korean walk in, come samida. You serve by talking their own language to encourage them. Santi pao yo ni. You try to remember their language to serve them by encouraging them, praying for people, or you make a phone call to encourage somebody that is in need. You serve through missionary work. Go out to the mission field. Fly with me to Switzerland. No, no, Switzerland. <laughs> you want to go to Switzerland? Maybe go to Congo. To mission work, you go to different places in the world as a missionary work. You serve by finding your calling, your giftings, and use your calling and gifting to serve. You serve by praying for others. Actually, that is so simple. You can pray at home. You can pray in your car, pray. You notice that that person is sick, you pray for that person. You notice that that friend has problem, you pray for that person. You serve by praying, being friend, visiting. You can use your gift. You can serve by smiling, encouraging word. Hey, you, you dance very well today. Thank you for dancing. You serve by encouraging people. There's so many ways to serve. But the key is we want to have the serving heart. We want to live for other people, generous to other people. So that scripture that I just read a while ago, we talk about serve, Jesus served the disciple. Now, in the area of serving, we should be humble that other people can serve us as well. We should, say, we should not say no when people want to serve us. Amen? So let's pray together that our children will be humble and let other people serve them as well. Father in heaven, we pray, Lord, that you will work in the heart of our children and every family in this church that they will be humble, 
to receive the service from other people. Not only that they serve others, but they open their life to be served by other people, Lord. We thank you, Lord, to show us that it's so important to live a life of service, to care for people, to have compassion for other people, to do everything to be the blessing to others. You say in the book of Acts chapter 20, verse 35, Lord, that it is more blessed to give than to receive. We want to give help, Lord, use us to give help. Use us to give words of encouragement to other people. Give service, give talents, give gifts, give word of encouragement, give finances, all kinds of things that we have, Lord, to serve others, help other people, Lord. We thank you, Father. You remind us of this important thing. We pray and believe, Father, that all of us will reach to the dis destiny, to the finish line with joy. And Lord, we believe that our children will reach to that destiny as well. And they will go to heaven with us. We will fellowship together in heaven, Lord, and they will have a lot of rewards in heaven, Lord. Father, we thank you so much for teaching us, reminding us to be good example to our children, to pray for our children, to teach and train them to be givers, to be generous, to be servant, to care for the needy, to have a compassionate heart for other people, Lord. Help us, Lord, to remember this teaching today that we're going to train our children to be the servant of the kingdom of God. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much for listening to the whole teaching. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 3, Now we who have believed enter that rest. Therefore, I believe that you are entering the rest because you trust in the Word, you believe in God, you believe in His promises. God bless you and use you to be the blessing to the nations. Don't forget to listen to the whole series, each sermon many times, and also other series as well. I see you in other teachings. God poured his fire on the day of Pentecost. And he still opened heaven to pour out his fire in our generation. May the fire of the Lord burn on the inside of you. Brings revival into your life. Send you out to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. May He use you to be a carrier of the fire of revival. May the Lord anoint you. May the fire of God burn every day on the inside of you. And the Lord will be glorified through you. May the grace of God work in your life and you become fruitful and you will have many rewards in heaven. May the Lord get the glory through your life.